Hello, and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are joining us from. Welcome to Engineering for Change, or E4C for short. Today, we're very pleased to bring you the latest E4C's 2012 webinar series. Today's webinar was developed in collaboration with Achala Atukasa, and our guest presenter is Dr. Francesco Piazzasi. My name is David Monken, and I will be moderating today's webinar. I'm retired, but I am the National 2008 President of the American Society of Civil Engineers, and am currently the President-elect of the Engineers Without Borders USA. I'd like to take a few moments now to tell you a bit about today's webinar, Housing for Families by Families. One of E4C's topical focus areas is structures, and we're glad to have the opportunity to address some of the important issues related to this field today. To do so, we've invited today's presenter, Dr. Francesco Piazzasi, who is the Director General of Atala Atukasa to talk about some of the work that Atala has been doing. Francesco, we thank you for joining us today. But before we get rolling, I'd also like to take a moment to recognize the coordinators of the E4C webinar series, Lana Aranda of ASME, Holly Schneider-Brown, and Alex Torres of IEEE who work on developing and delivering the webinar series. Thank you, team. If anybody out there has a question about this series, we encourage you to contact them via the email address visible on the slide. A little bit about engineering for change. Engineering for Change is a global community of now over 12,000 technically-minded individuals such as engineers, technologists, representatives from NGOs, and social scientists who work together to solve critical humanitarian challenges, whether in water, energy, health, agriculture, sanitation, or other areas faced around the world today. We invite you to join E4C by becoming a member. Membership provides cost-free access to a growing inventory of field-tested solutions and related information from all members of our coalition, including professional societies like EWB USA, IEEE, ASCE, SWE, ASHRAE, and academic supporters like MIT's D-Lab, international development agencies like USAID and Practical Action, as well as access to a passionate, engaged community working to make people's lives better all over the world. Registration is easy and it's free. Check out the website engineeringforchange.org to learn more about us and sign up. The webinar you are participating in today is one installment of the Engineering for Change webinar series, this free, publicly available series on, of online seminars showcases the best practices and thinking of leaders in the field who bring leading-edge technology and solutions to bear on global humanitarian and development challenges. Information on upcoming installments in the series, as well as archived videos of past presentations, can be found on the E4C webinars webpage. Our next E4C webinar will be on December 19th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with Bridges to Prosperity on the topic of building upon failure, 
Our presenter will be Avery Bang. To register, please visit the E4C webinars page. A few housekeeping items before we get started. Let's see where everyone is from today. In the chat window, please type your location. Any technical questions or administrative items should go in that chat window. You can also use the chat window to type any remarks you may have. During, during the webinar, to type, please use the Q&A window located below the chat window to type in your questions for the presenter. If you are listening to the audio broadcast and you encounter any trouble, try hitting stop and then start. If that doesn't work, you can use the call-in number for the teleconference. You may also want to try opening Web WebEx in a different browser. Following the webinar, to request a certificate of completion showing one professional development hour for the session, please provide your full name and the date you completed this webinar, as well as the code that we will give you at the end of the session. And you can send this to eabcuadmin at e IEEE.org. That will be repeated at the end of the seminar. Today's presenter, as I indicated, is Francesco Piazzazzi. Francesco comes from a family of Italian immigrants who moved to Mexico to escape the effects of the world wars in Europe. In 1957, his father founded a family business uh, focused on construction machinery. Francesco worked in that business, and the decades of experience that he accumulated in the construction industry has made him one of Mexico's foremost experts on housing issues. Francesco received his Ph.D. in 2006 after publishing an award-winning thesis on sustainable housing microfinance. He also received widespread recognition for his work, including the federal government's National Prize for Housing in 2007. Francesco, welcome. The presentation is yours. Uh, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here in E for a Change. And uh, the, the work that, that we have been doing is in housing housing for the underserved house population. And uh, we can start the presentation saying that in the, in the world there are a billion people without a uh, affordable home. Uh, how much is a billion people? Let's think for a moment that all America and Australia were built in carbon board houses. Uh, th this would be more or less the scenario of what we see. A lot of carbon board houses all around from New York to Tierra del Fuego and all Australia and the surrounding islands uh, will be will be like that. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, just talking about Mexico, the, the deficit is something about of 30% of the population, in, uh, 20, sorry, 25% to 30% of the population around the world. Uh, that this applies for all the developing countries for sure. Mexico is not it's not uh, it's not different. And in, in the industrialized countries like the US and Europe, the deficit of housing is something like ten percent. This do, does not mean that there are here in Mexico uh, six million people uh, six, sorry, six million families, 30 million people living uh, at the open. They have a home, but the problem is that the home is a uh, is, uh, home of precarious material, and maybe the, there is four generations living under the same roof in a soil floor. The same happens all around the world. The figure for the U.S. is that 10% of the population 
does not live in an affordable home, which is something uh, about 30, 30 million people own. So let's focus on, on Mexico. And the same thing will apply for all Latin America. If we go to other countries like China or India, the figures are double of what we are going to see. Well, in Mexico, we have a deficit of 9 million homes. From these, 6 million are considered the underserved housing population, which means 66% of the deficit, and 3 million are going to be served by the organization. Let's see how, uh, which are these organizations. This is a, a development, a classic development uh, in the middle of nowhere, uh, and 3 million new houses are going to be built in the next uh, administration. As you know, in Mexico, uh, in, in Mexico we have a change of, of in the federal administration, so the new administration is going to be built 3 million homes through the uh, Workers' Housing Trust. We have two of them. One is for the private uh, companies, and one is from the state. What, are, what you are seeing in the in the this is in Conavit. This is for the for the, the private companies in Mexico. If you are in a payroll, you after after certain time, you have the right to go to the Infonavit and ask for a loan to buy your home. And uh, if you work for the state, that's the other one, the the police. If you work, if you are a public servant, after a certain amount of time, you can go to the police and ask for a loan to to go uh, buy a house, an apartment, or whatever fits you. And there is also the private banking. Mortgage companies and banks uh, work with the Federal Mortgage Trust. The Federal Mortgage Trust is a, it's a development bank and works to provide uh, funding for the construction companies and the financial intermediaries, banks and private financial intermediaries, uh, to provide them with uh, uh, funding in order that they can uh, pay the builders and the contractors to build homes, apartments, or any kind of solution uh, to, to help. But this is not the problem. The problem is this is the problem. Uh, as you see, 6 million families live in dwellings that are unsuitable for housing. Uh, here we are looking at a photo of Carril 2000 Durango. These are the habitat conditions of the people that live uh, 10 minutes away from the, from the airport in Durango. Durango is located north of Mexico. It's, it's a desert zone, as you can see. And uh, 22,000 families live around Durango, capital city, in this kind of way. As you can see, it's considerable. And the same is for 6 million families around, around Mexico. This uh, 6 million family, uh, 5 per family, it's about 30 million people that live in this condition. Let's take a look of inside a home. Uh, this little girl that is drinking from a cup, her name is Juvia, which means rain. Rain in the middle of the desk. And we have uh, the photo on the right has uh, always has produced very uh, a controversy uh, for why there is uh, there is that uh, ad there that says life opportunity. As you can see, the in the back of the home there is a plastic poster of the model, international model Alessandra Ambrosio. That's why it says life opportunity. Uh, Mrs. Ambrosio could be a dentist, an astronaut, an engineer, an architect, and to step on a runway, she has a huge uh, salary, and he and her, her way of living and where he has born as, uh, could provide any kind of opportunity. As a Matria Sen, the economic prize, prize winner, said once in, in, in his book, uh, Liberty and Development, the liberty of choosing what I can do, uh, that's the, the, the real liberty. As we can see, Yuvia and her family has not that opportunity in her, in her, in her life. She lives in, you can see the bedding, 
you can see that the, 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 the floor is a soil floor. And here you can see part of Lluvia's uh, family. We're going to see in a little while Lluvia families. And this, this bed here is this corner of the bed. This is what should be the master bedroom where, where Rosa Maria and uh, her husband live. And Miss Lluvia, she has two, two siblings, and she has a total of five siblings. This house is made of carton board roof and precarious walls, as you can see, a plastic here, and uh, wood that is not treated, so in a year it's going to be gone, and uh, they, they have to, 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 to rebuild it. They have no toilet, they have no running water, they have no heater. This New Year's Eve in Durango is going to be something like uh, minus 5 Celsius, which is something like uh, 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 28 Fahrenheit. That's, that's the way uh, uh, 30 million people live overcrowded and uh, procrastinated. So what we do? We build homes for family and uh, the family. So, someone don't see any image? Hello? I'll just come in with a quick uh, uh, voice here. If, if you aren't hearing any audio, please stop and start again your audio broadcast, and that should resume audio for you. I continue? Please. Okay, so what we do? We build homes for family and by the family. As you can see, this little boy uh, is holding a card that says, Construimos hogares de las familias con las familias, and shows a, a house in a place called the Tela del Volcán in Morelos, which, which is a two-hour drive from Mexico City, and these kids are the the the, the sons of the family that build their own home. Uh, why we build houses for families by the family? Because there is no construction company that is going to go into the ruler or into the suburban area to build a home. Uh, because there, there, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a business really, it's a social, it's a social enterprise. And, uh, they can, they have, they don't have any opportunity to build a home. Until something like two years ago, in the Mexican statistics, the people, the underserved housing population was known as the self-builders. So there are self-builders, self, self well, they, they fulfill the, they need, and that's gonna be it. But that's a huge problem because these people buy the material in, uh, in by by uh, very very little at the time. As you can imagine, they pay huge amounts of money for very poor quality materials. They don't have any technical assistant, any engineer, any architecture blueprint, or any way to build a house. So they build a a a, a, a room, then another room. The sanitation really does, does not does not exist. So what we do, we go with the families, we train them, we teach them how to produce the material, and we provide a financial solution in order that they can have a home in six months instead of 10 to 15 years, which is what it takes to them to build this in this way of self built How we serve? Okay, you are taking now a view of a, of a home uh, located in the state of Jalisco. This home is for the sugarcane worker uh, that, that lives in, 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 in the state of Jalisco, Tamazula, Jalisco. As you can see, this is a 45 square meter home. It's something like a 500 square feet. It has two, two bedrooms. This this is bedroom number one, bedroom number two, has running water, has a rain harvest here at the roof, and has eco-technologies that we are going to see in a while. 
the material is a uh, compressed earth block. Uh, it's produced in the in the community by the community, and they 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 pay for it. It's a sustainable home. It's not yet a zero waste home, but it's our goal to achieve a zero waste home. Okay, let's see how we do it. We we have five five main engineers: sustainable engineer, financial engineer, technical engineer and franchise engineer. Let's take a look to each of one of them. Sustainable engineer. This house is in Chapa, in the state of Chapa. This is southeast Mexico. It's, uh, it's tropical. As you can see, all these people that you see here, it's uh, people from the community, and this is the, the model's home that they are, they are visiting in the, in the inauguration of the, of the program. We always build a model home in order that people can see, can, can feel, can look at the home and, and see that the home really exists and it's an affordable home. So they, they aim to have a home like this instead of a carton ball house. Here is the sustainable engineer. Uh, we have three main uh, inputs. One is the community. It's a community program. Uh, it, it's not a house-by-house house program. We have Echala Pucasa, put your car into your home, and we have the funding of the credit. Then uh, we have the, the, what each, uh, the, the input of the community is the housing, the housing needs, and the development. They own the land here. They own the land already, uh, where is, there is a carton board house, so they need this housing development. The Echela tu Casa it has the technology, the social franchise, and the experience our organization to be present at the community, and the funding is financing. It's not a giveaway program, it's not philanthropy, it's a, it's a develop, development process. It's an investment, of an investment opportunity, and it's a sustainable home for the community. Why we call it sustainable? As we know, in the sustainability model, the main, the, the axle of the sustainability is the human being. And we have uh, three, uh, we have to achieve three impacts. One is social impact, is the family integration and the community growth. Communities are getting, uh, are getting lost, are getting tear apart because People always think that going to the huge city is an opportunity, is the best opportunity that they have. And as you, as you know, in all Latin America, crossing, crossing the border to go to the U.S. to have a, 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 to, to have a job is one of the, that we call it, it's not the American dream, it's the Latin dream. When they arrive there, they, they find that it's not, it's not that nice dream. So providing a, a community, a, a, a development as the community is the social impact. We have then the environmental impact. The, the, the reduction of the, of the carbon print is huge because something like 80% of the material are, are, come, comes from the, from the region. They, we don't need that much price to go to, uh, to, to bring the material and it's always a green material. Then we have the economic impact. The economic impact, there is return on investment for the, for the investor, profit for the, for the community and for the com construction company. It's not a huge profit. It's a sustainable profit. If we don't have any profit, we can grow the program. If this should be something that's a philanthropy or assistentialism, the, the, the program cannot be replicated. And uh, we have economic spillover because people, in order to produce the material, people are, get a job, they are paid for producing the material, and they are paid to build the home. Why they are paid and we don't use sweat equity? Because uh, with sweat equity, people need any way, need an income for the, for the home to feed the family. 
So if we sweat, if you sweat equity, there is this phenomenon that, that they, they, maybe the orange trucks arrive to the local market and people said, I can go, I can continue producing the material or building the home. I need to go to the market because I'm going to earn $20 or $30 to unload the orange truck. So we pay them, it's in the cost of the house, we pay them so that it's a, it's a, it's not a, a sweat equity, it's a formal job. Then we have financial engineers. Why do we need financial engineer? Because saving is the key element for prosperity. If we have only credit and we don't have the, the culture of generating income and save from the income, this is not going to work. So uh, how, how we do this, how we can provide a financial engineer and saving for the what we consider one of the poorest people. These families that you can see here, uh, the, the income is something like, like a family income is like a, a, a $500, $600 a month for the family income. So how they can save? Well, there are many ways to provide saving to them. The most curious one is go we go and look at the trash of the people. We find soda, we, we, ha we, have, we find cypress, and we, ha we find uh, all kind of, of, I don't know if you are a, use a brand, Frito Lays around there, that maybe it's 50 or $60 in the trash that they don't need to use. Uh, they, yeah. So we, we teach them how to use uh, normal diapers. The, the humanity has been using normal diapers since ever. Stop drinking uh, soda and stop uh, eating uh, frito, frito things that they are not good for health. And from there, only from there, they are already more than in the middle of the, the, the road to have to pay back for an affordable home. Then we have a problem. These people, uh, they don't have a collateral. As you know, in all developing countries, the possession of the land is a huge issue. The problem is that they own the land, they have the right to build on that land, but the land belongs to the state. In Mexico, there is a figure called ejido, that it, they have the, the the right to 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 build the land, to crop the land, to harvest the land, to whatever, whatever, but the land belongs to the state. So they don't have a collateral. So what we do? We make a financial trust, financial education. We already talked about financial education. We work in this financial trust in order to have a collateral guarantee. How this collateral guarantee works, works with community savings. If someone, a family, starts to save something like uh, maybe $50 a month, which is enough to start the program, if just a family starts to save $50 a month and they put the money in an account at the bank, they are going to have problems because at the end of the uh, at the end of the year, instead of having fifty dollars, they, they are going to have a debt in, in the bank because of the costs and everything. So the community savings go into a social financial trust. The trust is devoted only to home and home improvement. Then we have a financial intermediary. This, actually, the financial intermediary says, "Oh, this is not going to work because the the." The target population does not have a collateral in order that I can provide uh, 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 a credit, a line of credit. So we said, well, but we have a social financial trust. If someone of the community does not pay you, the social financial trust is going to pay you back. 
and that's the collateral guarantee for the intermediary. So it's very important because it's not just a collateral guarantee, it's a liquid, it's a cash collateral that is more more, more uh, useful than uh, a, a normal collateral that you have been allowed. Then we have technical training. Technical training is, uh, well, is a key issue of this of this uh, program because uh, we don't use prefabricated or precast material. Why don't we use it? Because the prefabricated or precast material, like uh, concrete sheets and, and uh, that kind of, of material, it's produced in an industrial park in a city, and it has to be transported to the to the community. And then the community, maybe in a couple of days, in a, in a week, they uh, start to start. Uh, they have the home, but there is not economic spillover, and there is any kind of benefit benefit for the people. They yes, they do have a home, but they they don't have the money to pay back the home. They don't have the integration of the community. They don't have this housing committee that works to provide and guarantee for the credit. And they don't have the chance to have a credit because they are not involved. They are part of the problem, but with prefabricated materials, they are not part of the solution. If they are part of the problem and are provided with the proper vehicles and technology to, to be part of the solution, they are going to contribute and be eager to be part of the solution. So what we're seeing here, it's a, it's a, it's a typical range from uh, uh, a site. Well, we need a roof here. This is the first day when the equipment arrives. Here you can see the equipment, and uh, well, we are going to talk about the, from the equipment. Here you see the soil. What the, this is a compressed earth, earth block. The soil is an inert soil. It has not uh, vegetable vegetable content on it. What kind of soil is this? How can we find this soil in other parts of the world? Very easy. The soil that is used to make the base of a highway, that's the perfect soil to produce compressed earth block. Then we have here the community that are screening the material, and uh, we have here the cement or the lime, and uh, they are making by shovel the, the mix to put it on the on the on the equipment and to produce the material. Why you use shovels instead of mixers and screens like this uh, instead of a mechanical screen? Because we need to generate jobs. Here the the social part is very important. The program starts with a social engineer in the community so the people can rebuild and have this benefit from the economic spillover of the, the construction of the homes. And finally, we have here the material. This is a compressed air, earth block. We are going to see it in a minute, in, in inches. It, uh, it's uh, four, then we have four inches, then we have uh, six inches, and then we have uh, eight inches wide. And Let's see the equipment. This is the equipment. Uh, it's an hydraulic press that works at 3,200 psi. As, uh, this is the, the, the material. Works with any kind of engine. The engine is, does not show here. Um, uh, you can use gasoline, you can use diesel, or you can use electricity. Ob obviously, uh, the, the electric engine, uh, three-phase electric engine. It's the most uh, efficient equipment. The noise is very low, low and the equipment is very fast, but the most used in the communities is gasoline because uh, anyone can fix you uh, the motor, the, the engine, uh, uh, a gasoline engine in any part of the world. Diesel, it's a little more complicated, and diesel uh, engines still too high for the too high for the for, for the cost of the equipment. So the other press equipment produces two other blocks. This is the other block per cycle. Produces at 
2,200 other blocks per day. Uh, and you can build a home like this with 2,200 other blocks. So, uh, the other block is 4 by 8 by 16. It's 4 inches high by 8 inches wide by 16 inches long. So, our wall is going to be 8 inches thick. And as you can see, it has two hollows. Uh, it, it's uh, 6 centimeters hollows. This is something like uh, uh, two and a half inches each. And we are going to pass through the iron rebar, the installations, and everything. And uh, the other block is very resistant. It's more resistant or as, as much as resistant and a concrete block. It's uh, 1,520 pounds by square feet. In kilos, this is something like 100 uh, kilos by square centimeter. In, in Mexico, the, the, the code for a concrete block is half of this. It's like a 70, 70 pounds by square feet. And as you know, and the, the history have tell us, the R value, the thermal value of an other block is 7. This is a huge number for a natural material. If you have 7 as an R value, the inside of the home that you are building is going to be something like R value of 18. To have an idea, the solid concrete wall is something is about R value of 1, and in the block is R value of something like 1.2, 1.3. As we know, R value, the most, uh, the higher the number, the less the R value is. And also we have another thing that is uh, the, the, very important, it's the acoustics. Uh, Earth absorbs the, the, the sound, uh, the surrounding sound, so it's very comfortable to be in a, in a, a compressed earth block or another other house. And there is something that is very, very important also, is how much does a compressed earth block resist. This is very important. The, the, the other block is soil. So they have the same, the same frequency of shaking in a, when there is a system, a, a, an earthquake. So it behaves much better than a concrete unit, uh, uh, the, the compressed air flow. Then we have the eco engineers that are part of the of the of the houses. First we have an eco map. This is maybe the, the, the immediate and most important part of the of the of the program, which is the other block. Then we have rain harvest. Uh, rain harvest is very simple, as you can see in this in this uh, in this draw here. It's water that is uh, captured from from the rain and deposited in tanks. We can sophisticate that as much as, as is needed, but this is the first step uh, to provide the culture for rain harvesting. In in North Mexico, it rains maybe a month. Uh, a month per year in the desert in Durango, if, if it rains much. In, in center, we, see, we have something like six to seven rainy seasons month. And in the southeast, they have, they say that they have two stations, rain station and bus station. It rains all days, but even though there is not a culture of rain, rain harvest. Once that we have the rain harvest, we can filter the water, as we can see in this very simple filter. And uh, as we know, if the, the water coming from the rain is captured because, be, before it, it hits the ground, it's very easy to purify. If it touches the ground, the complications start. Then we have biodigester. The biodigester, we buy it. We buy it for a company called Rotoplast. It's, it's an industri in industrial production, production. 
Uh, divided by gestures, uh, we, we close the latrines, and if we can, we don't use the, the municipal sewage because it, it pollutes a lot. The, the sewage pollutes a lot, and the latrines pollutes more than a lot. So the biodigester is a steel unit, and, and there is no leaking to the subsoil, so there is no contamination. Then we have wood saving stone, like the, what, this one here. Uh, 28% of the homes in Mexico still using use as a, as a, as a energy for cooking. So a wood saving stove provides, uh, an, an, saves 70% of use of wood. They, they use only little pieces of wood instead of a, of a lot. And as you can see, it has the chimney because, uh, in the rural areas, they cook uh, with no cut caution inside of the home, so it's the first, uh, the first reason of, uh, pulmonary epithema and the fourth reason or cause of child death, intoxication by smoke. With, with the wood saving soap, we get rid of those two problems. Photovoltaic panels, uh, the one you can see here, it's a small photovoltaic panel, provides energy maybe to, to a couple of volts, but provides energy, and solar water heating. Uh, it's a traditional solar water heating. There are huge of them all around, and provides uh, hot water. Well, here is the, is the construction. This is, this is a construction site, as you can see. In the hollow, in the, in the two and a half uh, inches hollow, we pass through all the electric and hydraulic solutions comes from the from the ground from the from the funding and uh, the foundation. Sorry, from from the foundation and now passes through the holes. So so you, we we don't need to crack the 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 wall to provide the electric and hydraulic gas. It's it's not allowed to be inside the wall. It has to be external. Uh, the corners are overlapping, so we cross one to another, and we have a, a, a strong, um, a strong corner with iron rebar. In Mexico, you it's not allowed to build without iron rebar because of the earthquake zone. Then we have here with, with, the, with the instead of using a, a, a concrete beam, we use a U shape. Imagine the other block. Instead, it has a U. In, in, in this part, so you put your iron rebar horizontal, and then you put, you fill it with concrete, and you tie it with the vertical, so you have a whole system working. The eco mass is the, the mass that is here, and the iron and the iron rebar. It's a traditional way of construction to build a house, the house that we saw in the other in the other in the other uh, slide. Uh, we need something like two weeks. So this is social social housing social housing production. Uh, you remember Yulia? There, there she is. This is her new home, and they are the, all the siblings are one, two, three, four, five, six. We have all Yulia's siblings here in the in the door or their new home. And, uh, and uh, they say, well, uh, is this a material to provide a solution for the poorest people in the world? No, it is not. It's a, it's a high technology, so natural, green, environmental material. And uh, you can build residential housing, like the one you see in the picture. This is uh, uh, 250 square meters, which is something like 3,000 Square feet have four bedrooms, four bathrooms, uh, uh, chimney, whatever you want, the jacuzzi, and whatever you want. It's, it's a residential unit. And they also said that you can't uh, you can't work in more than one story using using uh, uh, compressor block or, or adobe. Uh, it's not true. There is this apartment building that is built in Morelos. It's three story high. And as you can see, there are no concrete beams. They are inside the wall. Everything is structured inside inside the, the wall. And uh, 
And then we have uh, the, the franchise engineer. We have the community. We have the saving. We have the people that have been working for building the homes are learning how to build the home and, and how to produce the green material. And they need a job, and the community needs more housing and more home improvement. So we put together all of these, and we provide training, supervision, technical assistance, job generation, a housing committee that is the one who, 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 in, who learns to engineer all the process. Housing co-design, as you can see, we have been looking at very different models of houses because according to the traditional uses and weather and the way they live, the house is co-designed with the people for the community. This is an open house with two bedrooms that are, are closed. The bathroom is closed, but the kitchen and the living room is open because it's the tradition and the social financial trust. And uh, here we have some recognitions that uh, HLA Tukasa has won. The World Habitat Award uh, has a better practice, one of the very practice of this year, Clinton Global Initiative, World Economic Forum, Iniciativa Mexico, which is uh, in Mexico, Rio Plus 20 Sustainable, sustainable uh, Forum, UBS, Ashoka Chain is Nature, the National Housing Award, Ersten Young, Partners for Global, Deutsche Bank, and the Ashoka 25 proposals that are changing Mexico and South America. And, uh, sorry. And, uh, well, you remember Yuvia. Uh, her name is Yuvia. Uh, there are, inside the new home, uh, it's an affordable home. There is, uh, one bedroom from the girls, one bedroom from the boys, one bedroom from the parents, one bathroom from all of, the, all of them in the home improvement. They are going to have another bathroom, bathroom a living room, running water, uh, and uh, energy. And as she said, it for a change. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Francesco. Now we'd like to open it up for questions and answers. Please use the Q&A window located below the chat window to type in your questions for Francesco. At this point, I don't see. OK. Uh, the, the question is, I'm, I am curious to know about the structure in the system of um, abundance. Lots were the, the phase material. Yes, there, there are the phase material. There are, they, they don't have any plaster on them. And in, in the, in the, in the hollows, the iron rebar is, is uh, tied to the foundation iron rebar. And they have uh, each uh, kind of, uh, any, According to the to the the, the study, uh, any every three, five, or eight la uh, layers of adobe block, they have another iron rebar horizontal. So you are providing rings of of concrete and iron rebar as you go up in the construction. That's how it works. How long does it take? Yeah. As I say, there is a question on how do you define affordable housing? Well, affordable housing is, is, uh, it's a UN uh, criteria. Criteria. The UN has 14 points that that provides the 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 data for an affordable housing. Has to be has to be uh, gender separation, you can have uh, more than 2.5 people in each habitable space. If you have more, it's considered overcrowded. And uh, you have to have running water, electricity, sanitation. And there are 14 points. If you go to the UN habitat, 
no habitat for humanity, UN habitat, and uh, uh, put there affordable house, you are going to see, you, you, you will see the 14 points that uh, the UN uh, managed for an affordable house criteria. Okay, the other question is, how long does it take for somebody to repay the cost of the home? Well, it takes uh, the, the financial model, it's up to 10 years. The, to have an idea of the, of the cost, the, the, the house, the, the 45, the 45, the two bedroom house, it's, uh, it's around $10,000. Uh, people have to, to provide a down payment for 10%, which is $1,000. And, uh, and then they have pay 10 years to pay the, the other $9,000. People from the community don't don't like that much to have a long term debt, and for them, ten years is a long term term debt. So they they the average payback for for the loan is uh, five years, and for a home improvement, it's eight months. All right. Can you talk or expand a little bit more about the zero waste goal in for the future? Yes, the, the zero waste is whatever comes into the house, uh, there, there is nothing throw away. Uh, so we have is this, any kind of food or packaging that goes into the house has, has to be converted in all the, all the organic material in a compost, uh, to be transformed into, into, uh, fertilized for the, for the field. And all the all the packaging, as we said, uh, cans, uh, carton, and everything has to be separated and has to be pro uh, delivered to a sanitary seal instead of a dump yard. And then the the water we have we have reached that already with the biodigester. There are no gray water or black water or residual water. All water goes, all used water goes into the into the biodigester. The next step is to separate, use the 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 great water uh, with uh, biological soap uh, to to be reused for 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 the crops for 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 gardening for to to use it uh, in the in the in the services uh, and uh, and the the energy well the energy we have to provide uh, larger solar solar panels the problem with the solar panel a solar panel that can provide energy efficient energy for all the house costs as much as the house but that, that, that's the goal all right uh, there are two questions that are very similar. Um, one asks, uh, are the blocks 100% soil, not a mix with cement, or um, are there any other additives that are put with the soil before you make the blocks? Uh, mainly we use cement and lime. The people that are poorest of the green solution don't allow cement into the mix. Lime works well. The thing is that uh, if you use only lime, you need uh, you need to be more patient with the material because with cement you can use the material in 24 hours. With lime, you need to stock it for something like a week and then use it. As as we know, cement is going to have to to achieve the greatest resistance in 28 days, and lime has this special characteristic that continues all the time to gird more, more and more strength. But at, at the beginning, you have to be uh, more patient with the material. Then there are a lot of chemicals that can be used as, as fertilizers. One is polyvinylic alcohol, which is very good. The problem is that uh, it's not expensive, but the problem is that you have to, to bring the polyvinylic alcohol uh, in a in, in in a dump uh, to the construction site, and maybe 
20% is polyvinylic alcohol, and the rest is water. So you are transporting water, and the transportation uh, get increase the, the the price, increase the increase the cost. And uh, there are other kinds of additives that you can that you can use it. And you mentioned the eight by sixteen inch blocks, but uh, gentleman writes he thought you could also do six by twelve, and that the two block mode could all, two block mold could also make the six by twelve. Yes, uh, we we the, the equipment can be can be built, can be manufactured with uh, any kind of measurement that uh, that the that the program requires. In some places, they want uh, they want uh, six by twelve by twenty blocks. Uh, in uh, they are heavy. They are they are heavy. So. Uh, maybe maybe Rosa Maria and these young boys here that work also helping to build the house. Uh, it's it's a little heavy for them, so there is no problem for the size of the of the of the block. We can provide any size. All right. Another question is: I'd like to know more about the role of E4C in training and your success, and how many people involved, how many projects. How many cities, how many programs uh, structured for long-term support? Well, uh, the, the, the minimum requirement for, for the, the, the break-even point is uh, 50 homes uh, or 150 home improvements. Uh, we, we, we don't necessarily start to work with 50 homes. In some places, we have start with 20 or with 10, and people start to to get confident and start to add uh, the 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 wheel to the problem. We are working in Mexico in around a thousand a thousand communities in all Mexico, uh, all around the Mexican territory. Most of them rural communities. In other parts of the world, we are working in Belize, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Honduras. Haiti, Egypt, and uh, and the Arab Emirates. Uh, we we are talking now with India uh, to to bring the solution there, and we have been to China. China has not been effective. It's too much complicated yet yet to go. If you go to China and you go to the to the huge the huge development cities, it's fine. But if you go into the rural it's pretty difficult to, to get along there. You mentioned um, 14 UN homes. The question is, where are they? The, the, the homes? Yeah, you 30, said they were pardoned? 30,000 homes so far. Okay. There are, uh, there are 90 percent of them are in Mexico. Um, the question on that, I understand that the auto block structure, but normally most of the cost and complication for the homes comes from the roofs, the windows, the doors. Um, what is the strategy for these higher cost pieces? Well, uh, there are two, two ways to, to provide a solution. Roofing is uh, roofing. Uh, the most want roof is a concrete roof, and uh, tile. It's a uh, pre precast tile or prefabricated tile. is still a connotation of poverty. If you your home, if you are in a rural place and you have a uh, fiber cement tile, I uh, mean. Okay, shows poverty. The thing is that, the, which, is, which is amazing, is that the fiber cement tile in Mexico is very near in cost in, to a concrete roof. It's not solid concrete. It's, uh, it's a bolt and there is a compression, a compression uh, part of cement with, with iron, iron rebar on it. And uh, 
then windows and doors, those yes are prefabricated, one, one solution. And uh, the other solution is to provide a workshop into the community so they can produce their own uh, house uh, windows and doors. They are all the same, so there is no problem. They can produce it uh, by thousands. All right. Another question is that the foundation is obviously a very important part and, and one of the most complex and expensive parts. What foundation systems have you found to be the most effective and cost efficient? The, the, to use a stone, a traditional foundation. Because stone is there, the, it's all around there. The footprint of moving the stones from where they are in the, in the quarry to the community is very low. And stone still very cost efficient for the for the for the use in, in a foundation and it's very appreciated by the people. People in the communities, people in the developing world uh, want a traditional construction. Why? Because what we find out is that it's the main patrimony of the family. In other more developed economies like the U.S. in Europe, maybe your patrimony is not your home, it's your credit capacity. In Mexico and in Latin America, credit capacity is starting. It's in, in, in kindergarten. All right. Um, we're about out of time. One more question. What about resistance to rain? Uh, no problem. The, 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 the material resists perfectly rain. Uh, we have built uh, houses in in one place called Puerto Madero, Chiapas. This is southeast. It's very humid. The rainy season is all year round, and it's in front of the sea. And uh, these houses were built ten ten years ago, and th they are there. And uh, the the test that has been done, the 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 uh, the, the test that has been done to the other block for intemperism resists, resists perfectly like a concrete or a, a cedar block or a concrete wall. All right, well, thank you very much, Francesco. It was a very informative presentation. And, and thank all of the attendees for your participation. Uh, on the screen is the PDH code number and where you need to email that. And if you have any more questions, you can email them to the webinars at engineeringforchange.org. And again, thank you for your attendance and participation. Good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. It has been an honor to participate.